hurricane, a tidal wave. Yes, these perfect life looks brilliant, give me more of this. I'm out of control, about to blow, and I've been caught in the undertow. So toxic, but I can't get enough. You fire me, fire me. NXT Battleground. Remember that this is a pre-recorded show as we, were, we had a special guest that Ash is going to introduce in a moment, but we weren't able to do it quite live, so we're going to go ahead and do it now. And Ash, would you please introduce us to our special guest today? Of course. I'm like, we, we had our her, better, her other half, so we had to have the other half of the group now. So we have host, interviewer, backstage correspondent, and more than anything, host of the Meta 2 show on Body Slam, Katrina! How you doing? I am fine. How are you? We are ready to have fun and ready to have fun with this car that Shawn Michaels is cooking for us. Yeah, we got Shawn Michaels in the corner because he's still cooking lately. He's, he's got things going on. What are your thoughts, uh, Katrina, on the show as a whole, just in general right now, heading into the show? What are you thinking? I think it's good. I like what – I mean, I've been on NXT uh, for the last two years, like really on it like as far as what they've been doing. Not that I didn't like Black and Gold, because I did. You know, we got some amazing matches from the Black and Gold era of NXT. But Sean has been really, for the most part, there's been times I kind of side at him. But this, this is more personal uh, preferences rather than him not doing a good job. But um, I mm -hmm. think he's doing really well. I love that we have Dread and Grace there currently. Uh, even for as brief of the time it may be, I'm like, that's just really exciting that he's engaged now, too. So I'm excited. Yeah. Um, Ashley, what are your thoughts on this card? I mean, we have the chef here for a reason. He's been doing really good, and this card is definitely an example of it. Thinking of Ethan Page and Jordan Grace being a part of this card is something I did not have on my, my bingo card for wrestling this year. So I hope he keeps up that momentum up to the paper though. Yeah. Um, I like the fact that we've got three women's matches on a six-match card. Like, let's, let's continue to agree that Shawn Michaels has done again more women on the card than men again for the second se second i think this is the second straight show he's done this because we have so. the six women ladder match we have jordan grace versus roxanne perez and then we have the the uh nxt underground match and the old we have the tag match and the triple threat and then the nxt title match so do we expect anything to be added to the pre-show you think we're going to get a last mm -hmm. minute pre-show match I was kind of torn because I felt like maybe something along the lines with Sean Spears and Javon Evans based on what happened. Maybe, not necessarily maybe both of them, but maybe something along the sides of the group there. That's the uh, the one I can think of that I could see getting added in there, at least for the kickoff. Yep. I'm all on the same lines. I think that match is almost a guarantee for the kickoff. Mm -hmm. Going to go ahead and start. Well, you know what? Let's start with the most exciting match in the card. Women six six women invitational for the women's North American Championship ladder match. Michin versus Lash Legend versus Kalani Jordan, apparently known as Lani. Really wish they would have given more context that before they went into that promo segment last week because still confused me. Fallon Henley, Sol Ruka, and Jada Parker for this lovely, beautiful title. What are we thinking? Pat, we'll start with you. 
I'm excited for this matchup. Uh, I feel like me and Trey Thomas said before that it would be nice to have a different title just because we had a lot of women on the show, and so this is exciting. Like, my heart wants to say Kalani. <laughs> um, I thought Kalani should have won uh, the match that Lola Vice won, personally. Um, and she didn't, and I was very sad about that. Um, for her to, like, lose and fumble her when she cashed in. So I want to say Kalani, but something is telling me it's either going to be Fallon, because I felt like they've been trying to focus on her kind of breaking away from being the, the kind of goody two-shoes, but also break her away from you know, from the staple she was part of. So I, I feel like Fallon's probably going to take it, and I think Soul Booker is really going to give us some top tier moments, as she always tends to do as athletic. She's probably the most athletic of the group. Uh, but I do think Fallon's going to uh, take it sadly. Um, not like sad for her, just like I want Kalani to take it. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't even mind Soul Booker taking it, but I do think it's going to be Fallon. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's true. First, I love how five out of the six women are black. This is just amazing to see. Just thinking of like, there was a lack of representation before, and now we have people like Jaden, Bianca, and Naomi just, you know, kind of moving that forward on SmackDown. And to see this on NXT, I feel like this is great to see. But it's just so hard to pick somebody because, like, Kat was saying, like, I know, like, Soul is definitely going to be that showcase in this match. I think with Kalani as well, based on how they have a unique moveset to themselves. But I just like I'm stuck between Fallon and Meechin because I would like Meechin to get a spotlight in WWE somehow, and I feel like NXT will be a good opportunity for this to happen. But it's also that moment that Fallon and I think Lash are the ones that are have been the, the longest in NXT out of this whole group. So I would like for either one of them, especially Fallon, to get that spotlight and get that championship there. And I feel like she could easily say like, "Oh, the moment I didn't care about people and I cared about myself is when I got that championship when I put myself first, to put it like that." So that's why I'm torn about uh, this one. But if I had to pick somebody, I would probably pick Fallon to win this one. I feel like it would be something unexpected for us if she does win. I mean, let's remember, Fallon Henley is a one-time women's NXT tag mm-hmm. team champion. So let's not pretend she's never won a title before. Um, I'm really surprised because, yes, yeah, Sol Ruka obviously is going to be the highlight of the night, whether she wins or whether she loses. The entire highlight of the night is going to be her doing a soul snatcher off the top of that ladder. Like, it's coming. We know it's coming, and I can't wait to see it. But how are we discounting Miss Parker already? <laughs> this title is designed to rocket strap somebody, and there's no bigger star in the making right now with that audience than Jada Parker. So it's either going on Soul Ruka, which is the smart booking decision, because if you look at the people who are in contention for this, most of them are heels. And going forward, there's a lot more heel opportunity, considering we're prob- probably, as much as I'm going to hate it, going to have a heel NXT champion, women's champion, coming out of this show. I think I wouldn't hate a babyface champion on the other side to give the heel something to do. So while I think the smart decision would be to strap the rocket to Jada Parker and give her this title, I think it has to be Sol Ruka. I think she makes a lot of sense from a booking decision. I think that she makes a lot of sense where she can wrestle Fallon. She can wrestle Jada. She can wrestle Lash. She can keep wrestling up the card. She can go down the card. Like, there's no spot she can't fill on this card. And I think that she's good enough in the ring that she can carry whatever match she has to do, whether it be a Lola Vice, which, as much as we don't like it, is getting pushed. They have her in the in the commercial for the merchandise for a reason. They are pushing her whether we like it or not. They're going to continue to push low device. So we've got to had her to the mix here too. So I'll say soul, but my heart is a little hoping that Jada Parker wins this because <laughs> she's just absolutely fantastic. She's I mean she's got people fainting at the PC, so she did. She made a man faint, and he says it's okay because at least it's Jada. <laughs> so she's very, yeah, she's getting those reactions already. <laughs> now, to, to, to calm down and cool ourselves, well, most of us, we're not going to cool Asher here, the Tag Team Championships. <clears throat> Naxium taking on the Good Brothers. I'm, I'm going to make my opinion on this real quick. Naxium wins because I could care less if the Good Brothers win. 
Nobody cares about the Good Brothers. The people booking NXT don't care about the Good Brothers. The people booking the main roster don't care about the Good Brothers. They're solely here to keep AJ Styles happy. So they're not winning. They're going. They're more than happy to just collect a paycheck. And they're going to continue to collect big paychecks. And they'll put over an axiom. And that's all I have to say. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, I I mean, my pick is automatic if you watch the show. Like, come on, how could I root against these guys? I can't. So I, I have to pick an axiom. There's nobody else here. Forget about the OC. Uh, sorry, I'm like, I, I like my two sweets, but not on this one. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Yeah. I am not a Good Brothers uh, fan. I've never been. <laughs> um, I don't know if they belong on Brothers. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not a fan. I say this every time they're mentioned now and I'm with Shay on the Medici after show. I'm like, yeah, I don't care. Um, <laughs> I don't care. Um, I really want Axiom and Ethan Frazier to keep this. I really do. I like both of them. Uh, you know, I've been a huge uh, Axiom fan before he even joined his high team. I want them to win, but something is telling me. Something is telling me he's going to lose. And it makes me so sad. I, I'm hoping that you know sean hears me telepathically he hears me just saying no let's not do this um and he keeps He's right there you can talk to him He's right over there in the corner of the street <laughs> you know i just I, I i don't want them to win but i feel like they're going to win they've been making a big deal bringing them back there and, and having them be like dominant i guess every time they showed them i'm like mm, that might mean we might be getting new champions but i am hoping and praying it's ax uh ax and nathan frazier i really do not like to see really like at all it's just Every time I just feel irritation <laughs> with your mention. All right, let's head to something a little bit more fun, a little bit thing that more, most of us can really get behind. The triple threat for the North American Championship. Joe Coffey representing Gallus versus Wesley, the former champion who was never pinned or submitted for the title, versus Oba Femi. Astrid, who you got? Uh this one's another one that's kind of tough for me because in my heart I want to say Wesley, but I have a feeling that Joe's going to be concentrated on Wes and it's going to be a good opportunity for Opa to get that victory. And I, I feel like either way it's going to be a showcasing for Opa as well because he's there with two people that know actually how to like plan out this whole thing for him to really showcase him and like really show him out. So I, I, and I don't see him losing like that anytime soon. I, I would say maybe a little bit later, but not right now. So it's like for for now, I'm gonna stick with Boba, and hopefully, I don't regret it. Yeah. Uh, this is tough. I think this is gonna be a really great match, honestly. Um, you know, Opa Femi has really been just dominating ever since we saw him. I knew I was like, oh, he's gonna win the title. He did, and I think this kind of you know removes Joe from Dallas a bit because I felt like he was kind of fading a bit with the group and this might be a way to kind of bring him back to the forefront but then also i love wesley i think he's phenomenal like he's just a really fantastic wrestler and he didn't lose technically he didn't lose it off of like a match it was because of an injury and so like i want to say like me being who i am as a person <laughs> i want wesley to take it back i'm perfectly fine with him taking the title back if he loses it the right way is fine, but I'm actually okay with maybe him kind of pulling the fast one and, uh, you know, winning it back. So I'm speaking with Park here. I'm going to go with Wesley. I mean, my main man is front and center in this picture. I can't not go against my man, Oba. This man is a brick wall. He is a brick fucking wall. Nobody's going through this man unless he wants them to. I think the only chance of anybody winning this match is Joe Coffey pins um, Wesley. The only other chance of Obahemi not winning this match. And by the way, that's a, that's a slam. Like, if I have to give another scenario, it's Joe Coffey pins Wesley. Because they're not pinning Obahemi anytime soon. Um, they have big things for him. This, this opportunity has already given him such a, a push in the right direction. He's still learning. He's still green, but his matches are good. He's not had a bad match yet. The fan base is behind him. People really enjoy him. Even though he's a heel, people forget he's a heel, but we all love him. 
because he speaks with conviction. He's he's like, look, Wes, you defended this title in matches galore. Five people, four people, open challenges. He's like, ah, no, no, no. We're not doing that. You earn a shot, you face the champion. I will face you. I'm not going to run away from you. If you get your shot, I'm more than happy to defend this title against you. Just give me the opportunity to let me know what's going on and we'll do this. He's the perfect heel because he's strong enough to be like, I'm going to do that. that that's it. Yeah, I'm going to decimate you and then do the thing he says he's going to do. He broke Josh Briggs's ribs last time by accident. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not like he's, it's not like this is a, a big thing for him. He's done triple threat matches on a bigger stage. Um, this is in. I don't think anything really crazy, with the exception of one match, is really going to happen because they're inside the apex. And I don't want location to play a role in this, but they're doing this in front of 250 people. They're not going to do something super crazy in front of 250 people, with the exception of one possibility, which we'll talk about later. So I think Obafemi retains here. I think that's a pretty safe pick in my mind, but I'm excited to see what happens because I think these three are going to get into a whole lot of fun inside that little building. We then move on to the match that might main event this show, depending on how well they want to put up and take down the, the ring ropes for this. <laughs> NXT Underground. Yeah. Sean, I'm looking right at you on my screen for the love of God. For the love of God, please let Shayna Baszler win this. I cannot listen to Lola Vice on Tuesday if she defeats Shayna Baszler in this match. Please, for the love of all that's holy, let Lola Vice lose this match. I cannot see her dance anymore. I was gonna say she's not gonna say it. She's gonna move it, so it's a little different. Oh <laughs> no! Sorry, Cap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. I am. I am gonna probably take the black this, but I am not a Lula Vice fan. I just. I'm not. <laughs> I am not a fan of her. I. I don't know. I guess when she first signed, um, I was expecting something different from what they were making such a big deal about her. And so to get there, and I'm like, okay. I mean, you, she's a pretty woman, she really is. And I can see that appeal for those fans who you know find her attractive, but that's kind of for me where it ends. Uh, and while I know she has a really like nice, pretty good round house, that's like all. And I'm a firm believer, you, you're not supposed to have just one trick. You gotta have more than one. And I feel like they added twerking now to the, to the bag of tricks. And I feel like we don't need that. Like, it's cool. Maybe, um, but maybe do something. I feel like you can be that character once you've really proven to be who I thought, at least what it was portrayed you was supposed to be. I feel like you're just kind of gone from like being semi tough and now you're sitting here dancing every opportunity you get. And there's nothing wrong with dancing, you know? Enjoy your life and have a good time. But yeah, no, I'm hoping, you know, I'm kind of <laughs> with you on that one. I, I really want Shana to win this. I think if with the two of them, of the two, she is the more convincing to win this type of a match to me. I, I feel like you're at the UFC Apex. This is the perfect opportunity to have Shayna win this. I feel like there's there's just no other way. Like, how how can you not have her win? <laughs> how can you not have her win, win this? I feel like she should be the one to win it. I feel like this is more for, you know, playground anyway with reference to how those matches in NXT on the ground is. Uh, this should be a, a, a walk in the park for her, hopefully, unless they do some nonsense, which they might. And then Lola went in and then I have to hear, you know, like three formal weeks of her doing nonsense. And I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> you brought Shayna back down here and let her do what she was doing at NXP previously. Let her win. Shayna Baszler exactly. is, by the way, still the longest reigning in number of days NXT Women's Champion in history with her two reigns. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to steal one from Ellen Knight is saying, Nana, nah. I really don't want Lola to win this one. <laughs> I really don't. I just like I, I don't wanna like not only not hear her talk about her victory after on NXT, but I don't want to see her shaking her ass about winning NXT either. It's like I don't wanna see it. And it's like it's kinda sad that 
so far of all her matches. I think there's only like been like two of them that I said, this is what I want to see from her. One of them was the NXT Underground with Natty. And that was a, one of those two matches that I thought, this is what I want to see. I continue doing that and instead of shaking your butt all the time. And it's just like, how do you bring Shayna in here and just have her lose to Lola? I know it. you want to showcase the newer talent and kind of show people like, oh, look, they can go against somebody from the main roster. But at the same time, having her lose, especially to somebody like that's like newer, doesn't have the experience that Shayna has. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me in that aspect. So I'd rather have Shayna win, show Lola how it's done, and you don't have to shake your butt to get victories. So come on, show her out, Shayna. Remember, we also have to remember in kayfabe, like let, let's bring this all back to kayfabe. And why would Shayna Baszler have a chance to win this? Shayna Baszler was on the Ultimate Fighter the same way Ronda Rousey was, the same way that Marina Shafir and Justin Duke were on. On top of that, Shayna Baszler defeated Ronda Rousey in her last WWE match. As much as we don't want to talk about Ronda Rousey, and we should want to talk about Ronda Rousey, the fact is she's an accomplished MMA fighter, and Shayna Baszler beat her in an MMA fight at that pay-per-view. Again, it was a nonsense match on the main roster that didn't make a whole lot of sense. Shayna did win that match. She should be able to win this, even in kayfabe, even if we're pushing all the vice. There are ways to make this so that Shayna can win this. Lola continue being pushed and everything's okay. <laughs> Especially, and in, in God forbid I have to bring this nugget of chaos into it. What if Sexy Red comes out and distracts Lola Vice by doing her own twerking and making Booker, Dream, Booker T's dreams come true? Because remember, Booker T has pitched. Lola Vice versus Sexy Red in a twerk off. Now, again, I don't understand why she hasn't changed the locks on him, but <laughs> he still has access to his home in Texas and he's apparently still married. So remember, there's also the guest host Sexy Red that could play in this because of the chaos that Booker T is throwing out there. Sean, there's a thousand ways to make sure that she loses this match. <laughs> make sure one of them. I don't care which one. <laughs> I don't care. It doesn't have to even be convincing. I just have to make sure that she doesn't shake her ass at the end of the show. Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> We're now left with two big matches. We'll go with the men's match because I don't... I, I honestly don't believe this is going to main event. And like I said, I think... If either title is going to change hands, that's the match that should main event. And it's between these two. If they're gonna if they're gonna put the NXT title on all ego Ethan Page, which wouldn't be a bad idea. I know people are like, you can't destroy Trick like that. You can't. Trick can lose this title and become a chasing babyface. It'll be fine. He doesn't have to have a long title. It will make Ethan Page the biggest heel in this company, literally. Three, two to three weeks after being debuted in the company. It's a good idea. I don't think they're going to do it. I think they're going to stay with Trick. But I'm finding hard reasons to not put the title on Ethan Page. Because I think Ethan winning makes a whole lot more sense than Trick winning. I think you can talk your way out of the title going on Ethan Page and remember, this is all Trick's fault. He's the one who forced Ava to sign the contract to give Ethan this match. Even though this is the one thing Trick didn't want Ethan to get, which is to jump the line. And eventually, one of these line jumping stories need to end with said line jumper winning the title. Because nine times out of ten, so-and-so jumps the line and loses. I'm going to go for it. I think Ethan Page wins the NXT title at Battleground. Astrid? This is one of those that I don't mind who wins it, to be honest. But I just like you, I keep thinking, like, I, re I think, like, the reaction we will get of Ethan winning the championship just, you know, weeks after debuting, I think it was something that would cause a buzz in the community after the show ends. And I feel like it's something that you can see happening. Especially when they think about the fact, like, look, he just came in here and a lot of people say that they don't know him. But I was like, no, nah, you're going to get to know him. And it's like, not only that, we already survived with Trick having 
uh, was it a few hours or a day or two of having a, a championship reign? So, it, you know, this won't hurt me as much because that won't hurt me the most <laughs> being the first one. So it's like, yeah, I could see, like you said, thinking of Tricky just chasing it. I feel like that's something that could happen with Lash involved as well. Now, now you know, kind of support him. He's like, oh, you lost it, but I know you can regain it because you have regained it. You know, you, you went through it before. You can do it again. And I feel like having like an like Ethan Page being extra cocky because he's like, this is my debut pay per view and I just won the title. Like, and I can be- already imagine the promos from this. And I love this man, so there's no way I can root against him either. So I'm definitely going all ego, all ego on this one. Cat. Yeah, I I like Trick. I think he's cool, but I was like highly upset that he um, beat Ilya Dragunov. That's my guy. Um, I love him, and I, I I know he's on Raw now, and that's fine and well, but I was devastated. I had to grieve uh, for this loss, and so <laughs> I am perfectly fine with Ethan coming and causing all types of havoc, causing all types of chaos. Whatever he needs to do, I am perfectly uh, fine with this. Uh, I definitely just I definitely said this to Shay the last time we were on that <laughs> job. Like, I am perfectly fine with this. Like let him come, let him become champion. Let him cause some chaos. It's gonna definitely be some chaos because he basically did jump the line. But I'm fine with that. I just I thought Trick was just champion because they was gonna move Celia Dragonoff anyway off the show and they made him champion. Because Carmelo left as well. So like okay, you gave Trick his his few weeks, that's fine. Fresh meat, I'm all for it. So I'm going to eat it. Yeah, I just think there's something to this all ego, like like leaning as far as you can into this all ego. Because the one thing nobody's ever done is do that. TNA had him for years. Never really leaned into it enough to give him anything more than, what, the North were only the tag team champions. Like, I don't think he ever won the X Division title. I don't think he ever won the, the, the actual TNA title. Um, he was on the push to get the TV title uh, in Ring of Honor. He was on that route, but they never pulled the trigger on that. So, I mean, what better way than to debut him and go, all right, none of you guys see what there is in him? Boom, world champion. And again, we don't necessarily, like, we can ping pong this title around a little bit if we need to. Like, we don't have to have champions who are, we're so used to the Roman Reigns in the 2000 days, and we're so used to the, you know, Gunther with 666 days. Like, remember, when I started watching professional wrestling and when wrestling was the hottest, You know, you'd have champions that were champions for five weeks, six weeks, ten weeks. If they made it three months, sometimes it was a miracle. Like, ping-ponging these titles is a thing that we used to do. And I wouldn't mind it happening a little bit more. Because a title change breeds excitement. And you don't do it for no reason. But I I have a feeling with Sean cooking the way he is, look at at that smile on his face. He's, He's got something up his sleeve. And if it's not Ethan Page leaving as the T- as, as the uh, NXT champion. Is it NXT TNA? <laughs> is it Jordan Grace leaving as a double champion? <laughs> Matt, what are your thoughts on Jordan Grace in NXT? And your thoughts on Jordan Grace challenging Roxanne Perez for the NXT Women's Champion? Oh, this, I am so excited. I am so excited for this. I love Roxanne. I love Roxanne since before, you know, she was in NXT. And so to kind of, you know, see her be the youngest uh, woman in NXT to win the title. She has been very fortunate to be with other women who've been really, like, great, really badass. I even like the fact that she's heel now because I was kind of, you know, not that I was upset with her being faced, but you know, you can tell what sometimes, sometimes things just kind of run its course a bit and get it kind of spice it back up. And so I was perfectly fine with her even seeing homage to Booker T and Stone Cold in the little supermarket where all they kind of did. And so this is like the road to her kind of getting back to where she needs to be as champion because she's also somebody who technically didn't lose the title the first time. Um, and so I'm fine with this. I love when Jordan came for the Royal Rumble. I was really excited about that because she's like super dominating. I got to see her multiple times wrestle in person and just like she can just like keep people across the ring. And so like the, I do think this is going to be like a fantastic match. I think they're going to push both of them to their limit. I would be surprised if Jordan win this only because it is NXT. I feel like the correct thing would be to have Roxanne win it is NXT. 
Uh, she is, the, you know, the champion, but I do think this is going to be a hell of a match. Honestly, I do think that Jordan is going to really have Roxanne a little bit of sex. Um, in moments during this matchup, I think she's going to probably have her just a little bit upset because she's not somebody she can easily throw around. She's not somebody she can be to be easily. I do, but I do think she will win it. In whatever way, I do think she will win it. I will be very, very surprised if they decide to be like, you know what, swerve it a little bit and have Jordan uh, win it. But I do think this is going to be a fantastic match. I hope it made it. Um, <laughs> I feel like it should because I think this is a big deal considering how against WWE was with kind of having multiple promotions in one at one show for a while. I know they did it before, but like it's been a, little, it's been a long time since they've really done that, and I like that they're doing it now. So yeah, I'm gonna go with Roxanne, but I do think this is gonna be a great match, and I do think Roxanne definitely has a bit of a challenge to win it, but I do think she wins. Now I've been thinking. I've been stewing on this, and I've been thinking. And I got a little bit of fantasy booking, and my fantasy booking always turns out wrong. So we're going to do it anyways just for the fun of it. On Sunday, June 9th, Jordan Grace wins the NXT Women's Championship. She becomes a double champion. On, I believe, June 14th is against all odds, where Jordan Grace has already announced that she is going to have an open challenge for the Knockouts Championship. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be a whole bunch of fun if the open challenge was answered by Roxanne Perez, who goes and wins the Knockouts Championship. And you have an NXT Women's, Champ women's Champion in TNA, and you have the Knockouts Champion in NXT. The way that this can work, and I've done a little bit of thinking about like the, how this goes in the future. TNA books so far in advance with their dates that WWE can line up all the talent they need to make sure that they're making all of the shows for TNA while not impacting their availability to be on NXT. And they can do the same the other way around. There's no reason why somebody in TNA cannot hold an NXT title. Because TNA typically doesn't do tapings on Tuesdays. And typically, they book so far in advance that all they would have to do is make sure that the shows are close enough to each other that they can get a chartered flight. Because WWE can make sure that that corporate jet gets whoever they need to whatever show they need to be at. I think Jordan this main events, and I think we end the show with Jordan Grace holding up two championships as a double champion, and ask and and Vic asking what happens now. I know no. it's crazy, but I think that's the most fun option. <laughs> it, it makes people watch NXT. It will make people watch TNA. It will make the audiences crisscross. And unlike AEW, it will give them a good first impression on one of their talent being on the other show. Because the hardest part about these talent exchanges is which promotion comes out better in the end. If you do the flip-flop like I'm suggesting, nobody comes out the loser because both titles get flipped. One person wins, one person loses. Everybody wins. Everybody's happy. And then you've got matches for Roxanne. Masha Slamovich. When she comes back, Killer Kelly. She can run through that NX, that, that DNA knockouts division doing just one-off title defenses until they decide to switch the titles. There's no bad reason not to do this. Astrid? Usually I will help you and give you the Bobby Fish first, the live, but this one I'm not helping you with. <laughs> uh, no, I cannot. I don't Roxanne is happy for me. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I'm not rooting against my girl, so I know they will definitely steal the show, and I'm glad that Jordan will have this kind of spotlight. It, it continues on to what we saw in the Rumble for her. I hope in the future we get to see a little bit more of this with the other girls because her and like her for example her and bianca and her and jade i had something i would like to see in the future and i'm looking forward to like this partnership happening every now and then just like again like a surprise that could happen for this one as well and yeah as much as i would like 
the Taras to switch. I cannot cheer again. I cannot go against uh, Roxanne on this one. Uh, I feel like either way they're gonna steal the show. It's gonna be a good showcasing for Jordan. Again, introduces a lot more people to TNA. See an event today as we're recording this. A lot more people are watching TNA because it's not only the 20th anniversary, but because of this crossover, introducing uh, TNA to a lot more people that haven't seen it before. So it's nice to see that happening already and give it that positive uh, positivity to this partnership already. So yeah, I think either way, they're both going to look great and I can't wait for this match. And I do hope it made events to show because I feel like it, it definitely deserves that spotlight when you're doing something special like this. And before we get out of here, do we think that there are going to be any other TNA stars at NXT Battleground. Okay, we'll start with you. Hmm. I mean, I I mean, this is just more of me being like a fan of him. Like, I wouldn't mind seeing Alex Shelley. I know he was in WWE before, but uh, he's also a free agent, <laughs> and so I wouldn't mind seeing him pop up. I would actually love for him. I I, I think. Fantastic wrestler, so I'm gonna. I, I'm hoping like we can get like a little taste of him, even if it's for one day. I'm fine with that, but I would love to see him. Ah, I'm stuck between two, but uh, one I would like to see will be Josh Alexander. I feel like he will have a good mix with the NXT roster, and if I could get a Joe Henry cameo at least, Lord, I would take it. Any any bit of Joe Henry on my show on NXT, I will take. I don't care how long. I just talk, as long as I can see that man, somebody say his name and he appears behind them. I don't mind it just being that. I just want to see him on the show somehow. Give it to me, please. Mine's gonna be something we kind of already I, I kind of already touched on it. When when Jordan Grace, when Masha Slamovich was at Bloodsport taking on Shayna Baszler, Masha Slamovich brought Jordan Grace as her second. I wouldn't be surprised if Jordan brought Masha to NXT just to have a little bit of backup. She doesn't have to do anything. She doesn't have to appear on, like, they just be backstage, getting her ready, getting her hype, things like that. I wouldn't be surprised if it's something like that. The Joe Hendrys are obvious, but I, th I think we're saving Joe Hendry for Clash at the Castle. I'll be honest. I think we're getting a backstage segment where our truth says something silly and then Joe Hendry pops up from behind him. And then, and then obviously, our truth calls him some other ridiculous name that's not Joe Hendry. Joe Henning is probably the most obvious one that I can think of. Um, but either that, or it's the one person our truth actually knows, which would be even better if it's the one person who our truth actually knows by name is Joe Hendry. But with that being in Scotland, I think that's that's where that goes. But like I said, for here, I think it would be jo I think Jordan bringing a member of the Knockouts division to come with her might be fun. Whether it be a baby face, whether it be a heel, um, I wouldn't mind. I know I know this would pop Astrid a whole bunch if it was Tasha Steeles. I think that'd be a lot of fun <laughs> because yeah, I know right. she has connections with a lot of the people in NXT. Mm -hmm. uh cat thank you for joining us can you go ahead and let the people know where they can find you ah uh, thank you for having me um i am on most platforms with cat we trust everywhere to eat this week except for twitch facebook and um i want to say yeah twitch youtube and facebook everywhere else to eat this week that's basically private and you can find her uh miss cat every tuesday night while we are on live, we'll be both we're competing shows, but we always like to to send people over to you when, when we get the chance to uh, make sure that you watch the Meta 2 every Tuesday night on the Bodyslam.net channel. They do fantastic work. They've even been shouted out by Noam Dar. I mean, he has poor taste. It's Noam Dar. But either way, he did shout out that he likes the name of the show. So got to give it there. And like I said, we have the links down below that you can go ahead to go to any of them. Most specifically, go to l i n k t r dot e e slash in cat we trust. You'll find all the links there to everything Cat's doing, all of her work on the independent wrestling side, all the work she does here on the YouTube side. You can find it all there. But we will be back tomorrow night with DC Hendrix as we go ahead and we talk about what happened at NXT Battleground. So join us tomorrow night to see who's the NXT champion. Who's the women's champion? Are we sad that we had to watch Lola Vice dance? We'll find, answer all those questions and more tomorrow night. Until then, we'll see you later. Goodbye. <laughs>